Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how you can turn raw and primary data into a meaningful research report. Well, see, many researchers, labs and institutions collect raw data, but they're not able to present it in a structured and publishable format. Well, if you can turn this data into insightful reports or even papers, you're going to become their go-to expert, especially for a large number of international clients who need help in presenting their research in a fluent academic English with proper structure and interpretation. So we're going to do this by using Claude AI and let's begin from scratch. But see, question is, do I have primary data available with me? And as of now, I'm not working on any research project. Might be your case as well. So we need to pick up primary data from somewhere, right? If you see on my screen, this is what I've done. I've gone on open ICPSR website and I have found the data from here itself. So I went here and this is my topic, right? Efficacy of do-it-yourself air filtration units in reducing exposure to stimulated respiratory aerosols. This is my topic and I give a search as go and you can see this is what I found. It's a data published in June 2025, so useful to me, very um, latest, and I can just simply click on this, and this is what I get. If you see, this is the primary data available with me, latest, and this is the topic. You can choose many other websites also where you can fetch primary data from. If you see, these are the examples. You go to data.worldbank.org, and you can get primary data in relation to the World Bank. Moving on. If you're looking for European data, this is the website data.europia.eu slash en. If you're looking for data from the US, data.gov. And uh, go ahead, do your search. If you can see so many data sets are available, whatever your topic of interest is, just type it out and you're going to get a good set of data to start your work with. Now, once I've collected this data, our primary job here is to analyze this data with Claude AI. So I'm going to open up my chat link and show you how I started off. As you can see on my screen, this is my first prompt right here. I said, I'm sharing with you raw data concerning a research. This is about efficacy of do-it-yourself air filtration units in reducing exposure to stimulated respiratory aerosols. And if you can see, I've gone ahead and attached all of these files. Claude allows you to do so. Simply click on the attach button and attach these files. And Claude is going to analyze these for you like I have done. And you can see that I have done multiple files together. So you can also do this. I'm just opening up the CSV. So these are all in CSV format. Now I say that the principal investigator, so I say we will help for principal investigators, which is the United States Department of Health and Human Services, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. What do I say? This is my very simple prompt right here. I say, can you analyze it all and turn it into a meaningful research report? Bang on right there. And this is my first prompt for Claude. So it says, I'll analyze this comprehensive data set on DIY air filtration units and create a meaningful research report. It starts by examining the data. If you can see, there is a whole thought process that is happening here. Just a couple of seconds did not take a lot of time. And here is the research report, efficacy of DIY air filtration units document. Let's go through this. Okay. So if you can see, this is the topic right there, efficacy of do-it-yourself air filtration units in reducing exposure to stimulated respiratory aerosols. It's giving me a research report. It starts with a summary about how this is a comprehensive study, which is conducted by CDC's National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. There are the key findings, right, that the cube units reduce normalized aerosol concentration to 37.4 of baseline levels. Four units achieve 48% of baseline concentration levels and so on and so forth. It gives out an introduction, the methodology of the research. So it talks about the experimental design. Further, if you see, it is uh, talking about the DIY unit configurations that have been tested here. So there is a cube configuration, there is a Ford configuration, then there are fan models that have been evaluated. And these are the results. If you see, there is a cube and Ford, what is the normalized concentration, reduced reduction efficacy, and what is the sample size that has been tested. It also gives me a report on the masking effects, the fan performance characteristics, air changes per hour, special distribution analysis, the technical analysis, moving on to discussion. So what are the practical implications around it? Yes, it is cost effective. Then uh, feasibility is there. Performance optimization can be done. There are some limitations as well, which it has found out for me. So aerosol characteristics used 
KC1 particles as surrogates for respiratory aerosols. Real-world conditions. So lab conditions provided optimal scenarios. Real-world effectiveness may vary. So it's giving us the limitations and considerations as well. Comparisons have been done. Recommendations are present. And finally, the conclusions and key takeaways. So I really like how in one single prompt, Claude has gone ahead and created this research report for me. But I think that can more can be done here, right? And in what sense? We can put this into a better structure, in a better format. So why not give that prompt to Claude? I'm just going to close this and show you my next prompt right here. So this is the research report. And, uh, you know, because I'm not aware of what is the most appropriate way to put this data into, I want to put it into a structure, but I don't know which is the most appropriate style. So I ask Claude, why not, right? So I say, what are what are the many style structures of preparing a research report and which one will be the most appropriate for this one and why now this allows space for claude to do the research analyze the best structure in which this data would fit and then put it into that structure so again your work of doing that research is minimized it just will take a couple of seconds for claude and you don't have to get into the structures of this kind of topic or whatever topic you choose, in fact, and put it into that structure. Claude will do it for you. So what is it done? Analyze research report styles and pinpointed optimal format of for study. So here it says there are these major research report structures. And if you see all the formats have been given here. So there is the IMRAD format, which is introduction, method, result, and discussion. Then there is a technical report format. There is a policy brief format, white paper format, academic thesis format, conference paper format. And what would be the most appropriate for this kind of data? So it says the most appropriate format for this study is the technical report format. And it also goes ahead and gives reasons as to why the technical report format is the most optimal. If you can see, there is a government research context that is there here, which is the CDC, NIOSH multi-audience requirements, practical implementation focus, there is a comprehensive data set, and it also goes ahead and gives the format to me. So in my next prompt, you will see, I say that, okay, can you make this report into a technical format for me, like you have suggested? And right there, five seconds of time, and it has created this report into a technical format for me. Let me just maximize this, yes. So this is a technical report on efficacy of do-it-yourself L filtration units. It has gone ahead and uh, said it is prepared by who, report date, classification, and now the format and the structure is much better in the format suggested by AI to us. So there is a problem statement, current state of knowledge. This was missing in the earlier part, if you remember. Study objectives have been given. They've been divided into primary and secondary. This was not present. Scope and limitations were given earlier, but now if you see, it's more specific, right? So control laboratory environment, but what is the size? Uh, surrogate aerosols, bath KCI particle, then short-term exposure assessment. So there is a 60-minute experimental period. So it becomes more specific now, more technical rather. The methodology has been given. So now if you see test environment specifications and here every single detail about the dimension, the air supply return, baseline, everything is given and so on and so forth, right? So it has put the data into a report first. It's analyzed the best format to put it into, and then it has gone ahead and put it into a technical format with me, right here. But I still think that uh, more can be done here, right? So what do I do? I go ahead and say, am I missing something? Do you think there are important sections we can add to the report? Now, this is the final report that has been given. Now, it is up to you how much you edit it and how much you are able to prompt to AI to get the best results. So I'm going ahead and asking it, do you think there is something missing? There are any important sections? So here is the part where you do your additional research and find out that can things be added and suggest it to Claude. Exactly what I've done. So I say, what about some more contextualization? Maybe a section showing how these findings align with um, supporting existing public health or air quality guidelines. And how about we include some advanced data interpretations such as comparative effectiveness summary. And I say, you know, I'm very cautious here. So I'm telling Claude that I can be wrong with my suggestions. I'm seeking your help here. You have to think hard and take a call. This is just my suggestion. Do your research and then take a call. You're free to accept or reject my suggestions. If any doubt, you can ask me. 
so you know it assesses my suggestions it accepts all of these things and uh, there are some gaps it identifies goes ahead ask some questions and it says shall i proceed with an enhanced version of incorporating your suggestion so i say absolutely yes i want this to be a comprehensive report and then it goes ahead and gives this report to me which has uh, more inclusions of uh, what i suggested so regulatory alignment has been given something that i suggested then implementation readiness cost benefit strategic recommendations all of these have been included here now this is just a report in this format and i think we can do one final go to make this more effective what have i done here i say let's move on to my prompt and i say yes can you please generate a visually appealing framework to back the proposal it generates a visually appealing proposal for me and i think some text is missing so i correct uh, ask it to correct that and i also see that it has to be really professional and uh, further and with that it generates this air filtration implementation framework it is an interactive artifact and this is how it looks so looks much much more appealing it's presented in a professional manner incorporates all the data that i took out presents it into a proper structure and then is into this perfect visually appealing format which is the diy air filtration implementing framework the summary now if you can see you can see all of these uh, numbers right here present in front of you there is a comparison chart moving on you can see a strategic implementation so timeline is there now all the pointers the check boxes have been mentioned here there is a graph for you so you can see the fiber investment per unit how much savings how much uh, healthcare cost avoidance etc everything in a beautifully presented format just by putting in raw data into cloud key performance indicators authorization and next steps well with this visually appealing format there is one step further that you can go ahead why don't you make a grant proposal out of it and like i just showed this to you you can do the grant proposal also with ai within just a couple of minutes do you want to learn how you can scrape massive amounts of data and make research proposals out of them well there are the most amazing work opportunities for academic writers in 2025 and you want to know where you can find them but well, you should definitely join our 3 day online and live boot camp that is happening on the 28 29 and 30th of june 2025 it's going to be live and online make sure you're marking your calendar no recordings are going to be available and i will definitely see you there